Hello everyone, I am Ashi Jain and today I am here to share my experience of Smart India Hackathon 2024 with you all. Previously, I uploaded a vlog of SIH 2024 but I never got this opportunity of sharing my journey with you all, of sharing the lessons I learned from this experience and so today we are gonna do that. So for people who don't know me, I am Ashi Jain and I am pursuing B.Tech in Computer Science and Engineering branch currently. I am in my third year and I am here today not just as a student but as someone who, who dare to dream big. I, along with my incredible team of six members, two girls and four guys, got this amazing opportunity to participate in the Smart India Hackathon 2024 and yes, we were the fortunate team who got this opportunity of going for the grand finale by working on a problem statement that was given by Ministry of Defense. But before you think that uh, this was something easy or we had some sort of special advantage, no guys, we didn't. We came from a tier 3 college and we had limited resources and honestly, we had no idea of what we were getting into. Yet. Here I am, excited to share how this all happened. Let me be completely honest with you guys, our journey wasn't easy at all. When we first heard about SIS 2024, my initial reaction was doubt. We looked around and saw teams from premium institutions like IITs and NITs were going to participate in it. We wondered, do we even have a chance? But here's what changed everything, our mindset. We decided to give it our best shot irrespective of the outcomes. And that changed everything. We spent weeks uh, juggling with the problem statement of the Ministry of Defense. We divided the task uh, between all the members of the team. There were people who were working on the UI UX. There, were, there was a development team. There was a presenting team who were in charge of all the presentation work. And there was a team who were, you know, constantly, um, you know, motivating people because that is also something that is much needed uh, uh, when we were working in a pressurizing environment. We also had our mentors. They were quite supportive. So that is... Uh, that was our team's strength basically. We were learning new technologies, you know. We were learning new frameworks as we uh, went on. Uh, late nights became a normal for us. We were filled with excitement and um, exhaustion, to be honest. So, yeah. Uh, there were definitely moments when we completely felt stuck. And I remember this particular night. It was uh, in the grand finale itself. Our prototype wasn't working and uh, deadlines were approaching. Um, it was maybe the first evaluation or the second evaluation, uh, evaluation session and we uh, seriously considered giving up. So, but uh, you know what kept us going? It was um, our team, yes, each other. Because when one person was feeling down, there was the other five lifting that person up there were also our mentors, um, really thankful for the mentors, to be honest. I mean, I don't know what we would do in that Now, moment. let us look at some of the challenges that our team faced during the SIA journey and you guys might as well face in the near future. The first one being time management. Because uh, we are college students, we have limited time and we have to balance it between learning new technologies, we have to uh, do assignments, we have to attend classes, we have to do the SIH preparation. So what our team did was we created a shared calendar, we have we blocked up some time for SIH alone and uh, we used to take it up as our part-time job. So that is what worked for us. The second one was imposter syndrome. Because in this world of constant comparison of students with bigger fancy institutions, we realized that consistency and collaboration matters more than anything else. It doesn't matter where you come from. The judges are not going to evaluate you on the basis of your college, but they are going to evaluate you on the basis of your work. So that was there. And the third one was technical gap. Because in our case, we take up, we took up the, uh, we took up the problem statement of Ministry of Defense, and we realized that we had minimum knowledge about, uh, you know, the PS. 
so our uh, ps required a lot of research so what we did was we leveraged their tools we reached out to seniors we reached out to industry professionals and most importantly we were not afraid to say that we don't know when and we will figure it out as we work on it because um, that is something you have to be completely honest about your thing you know so we uh, always uh, used to buy some time whenever needed from the mentors as well from uh, anyone who used to come uh, for the judgment or would tell us to do a particular task we would always tell them that yeah okay we are working on it so that worked now let me take you through what the actual finale experience was like problem statement we spent hours understanding the ps and most importantly we spent hours understanding why the ministry of defense gave this ps the second thing was team role we had clear roles research development design documentation presentation and project management the third thing pro- uh, prototype development we built multiple versions of pro- of our prototype it failed multiple times and we learned from each failure it was the constructive learning okay the next thing was the finale the hackathon was intense exhausting and absolutely exhilarating picture this 36 hours of non stop work brainstorming sessions with the mentors who challenged every aspect of your solution real world problem solving under immense pressure and pitching to the judges who knew more about your domain than you did because they were actual scientists of drdo okay so it was uh, like um, they were speaking in jargons and we literally have to search up what are they saying so so that is what it got when they announced us as the winners it felt surreal but more than the victory what we gained was invaluable confidence that we can solve real world problems recognition from our college and you know tech community a network of like minded innovators proof that your background doesn't matter ever since i've been i've received a lot of questions from you guys asking about ps selection team formation and ppt formation so i have some of these questions uh, here the first is how do we form the perfect team there is no perfect team but there are set of complementary teams so what our winning formula was two developers one domain expert one design and ux person one documentation and research person and one presenter who who is going to pitch the idea in front of the judges the next question is how do we choose the right ps so you need to match up with your team strength you need to understand what uh, they are good at you need to match up with their with their interest and uh, you know basically research uh, because already because obviously you don't know a lot of stuff so you have to have a good research and only after the research you can tell if uh, this ps is doable or not if you really want to work on it or not you have to discuss with your team you should uh, you know uh, do a lot of google meets and such for the ps selection you sh- uh, don't go for the trendy topics look for clear and sp- uh, specific requirements of the ps next question is what makes a presentation stand out so for presentation you need to keep it as visual as possible include diagrams flow chart prototype screenshot you can also include the working demo of the prototype because even if it is basic it will still show the functionality you can also do it in the storytelling format you can first address the problem statement you can also compare with the competitors what they are bad at and what is it that you are improving then you can uh, come to your solution and uh, you can show the real world impact of the solution because judges don't have the time to you know go through the big theoretical presentations they just need the solution uh, that is going to work and that is it So guys that was our SIA journey thank you so much for watching everyone i tried to address all the questions that i had with me uh, i hope it gave some clarity and a bit of confidence too so again thank you so much guys i'll see you in the next video